At the bottom of the world, on a floating ice shelf moving 400 meters closer to the ocean every year, sits a structure that shouldn't exist. Halley 6 Research Station operates in temperatures that drop to minus 56 degrees Celsius in a location where the sun doesn't rise for 105 days straight. The ice beneath it is constantly shifting, cracking, and calving into the sea. Most permanent structures here would be crushed, buried, or lost to the ocean within years. But this one was designed to move. Britain's Halley Sext isn't just a research station, it's a modular, relocatable platform built on hydraulic legs and skis, capable of being towed across ice like a convoy of giant pods. It became operational in 2012 and officially opened in February 2013, and it's already been moved once to escape a growing chasm in the ice shelf. The engineering behind it represents one of the most extreme construction challenges ever attempted in Antarctica. The Halley Research Stations have been part of British Antarctic operations since 1956. The original station was a simple timber hut buried under snow within months. Five more stations followed over the decades, each one eventually crushed by snow accumulation or lost to ice movement. By the 1990s, it became clear that a completely new approach was needed. The location itself was non-negotiable. The Brunt Ice Shelf, where Halley sits, is one of the most scientifically valuable sites on the continent. It's positioned directly under the ozone hole, making it critical for atmospheric research. The site also sits on a natural platform for studying space weather, magnetic fields, and climate data that can't be replicated anywhere else. But the ice shelf is also one of the most unstable surfaces in Antarctica. It floats on the ocean, moves constantly, and periodically fractures. In 2012, glaciologists detected the first signs of a major crack forming upstream of the station. By 2016, the crack had grown into a chasm more than 15 kilometers long. The decision to build a station that could be relocated wasn't optional. It was survival. The design team, led by Hugh Broughton, architects and engineers from ACOM had to solve a problem no one had solved before. How to build a structure that could withstand extreme cold, hurricane force winds, complete darkness for months, and still be mobile enough to relocate across 23 kilometers of ice. The solution was a modular system. Halley 6 is made up of eight separate modules, each one a self-contained pod mounted on hydraulic legs and skis. Seven of these modules house living quarters, laboratories, and operational facilities. The eighth is a dedicated energy center. Each module weighs around 75 tons when empty. Fully loaded with equipment, supplies, and personnel, the total weight of the station exceeds 980 tons. The hydraulic legs are the key to the station's mobility. Each leg can extend or retract independently, allowing the modules to rise above accumulating snow. When snowdrifts bury the skis, the legs lift the entire structure back to the surface. When it's time to move the station, the legs retract and the modules rest on their skis. Bulldozers then tow them across the ice in a coordinated convoy. The modules are linked by flexible telescopic corridors that can expand or contract as the station moves. These corridors are insulated and pressurized, allowing staff to move between modules without going outside in minus 50 degree conditions. Building the modules in Antarctica was impossible. The construction season in Antarctica lasts only four months, from November to February, when temperatures rise to a barely workable minus 20 degrees Celsius. Winds regularly exceed 100 kilometers per hour. There's no local supply chain, no infrastructure, and no backup if something goes wrong. Instead, the modules were prefabricated in South Africa and shipped to Antarctica aboard the RRS Ernest Shackleton, a specialized polar research vessel. Each module was built as a complete unit, fully fitted with insulation, wiring, plumbing, and interior walls before it ever reached the ice. The first modules arrived in December 2007, transporting them from the ship to the construction site 15 kilometers inland from the ice edge, required a convoy of modified bulldozers pulling sleds across sea ice. Each module had to be moved slowly, with constant checks for ice stability. One wrong move could send a 75-ton pod through the ice into the ocean below. Once on site, the modules were positioned using GPS coordinates accurate to within a few centimeters. Hydraulic legs were extended, and the modules were lifted into place. The flexible corridors were then attached sealing the structure into a single interconnected station. 
Halley 6 operates entirely off-grid. There's no power supply, no fuel deliveries during winter, and no resupply once the summer season ends. The station has to be completely self-sufficient for nine months of the year. Power comes from a dedicated energy module equipped with diesel generators. Fuel is stored in insulated tanks designed to prevent freezing. The station reportedly consumes around 150,000 liters of diesel annually, all of which must be delivered during the brief summer window. Heat is distributed through an insulated ducting system that runs between modules. The exterior walls are built with multiple layers of insulation, including vapor barriers and thermal brakes, to prevent heat loss. Even so, interior temperatures in some modules can drop below freezing if the heating system fails. Water is produced by melting snow. The station collects snow using a mechanical scoop system, then melts and purifies it inside a dedicated plant. Wastewater is stored in tanks and removed during summer resupply missions. Nothing is discharged into the ice or ocean. The station's ventilation system is designed to prevent ice buildup inside the modules. Warm, moist air from cooking, showers, and breathing would normally condense and freeze on walls and windows. Halley 6 uses a heat recovery ventilation system that extracts moisture and recycles warmth, keeping the interior livable without wasting energy. Halley 6 is staffed by around 16 people during the winter, when the station is cut off from the outside world. During summer, the population swells to around 70, including scientists, support staff, and logistics teams. The living quarters are compact but functional. Each staff member has a private cabin roughly 3 meters by 3 meters, with a bed, desk, and storage. Communal areas include a kitchen, dining room, library, and lounge. There's a small gym, a greenhouse for growing fresh vegetables, and even a bar. The station has satellite internet, though bandwidth is limited. Video calls are possible, but expensive. Most communication happens through email and text. Entertainment includes a collection of books, movies, and board games. The isolation is extreme. During winter, there's no possibility of evacuation. The sea ice is too unstable for ships, and the weather is too severe for planes. If someone becomes seriously ill or injured, they have to wait until spring. The psychological challenges are well documented. Living in complete darkness for months, in temperatures that make going outside dangerous, with the same small group of people, tests even the most experienced personnel. Candidates are screened carefully. Medical checks are rigorous and psychological evaluations are mandatory. In 2016, glaciologists monitoring the Brunt Ice Shelf detected a crack that had grown into a chasm more than 15 kilometers long. The chasm was moving closer to Halley 6, and projections showed it could eventually cut through the ice shelf entirely, creating a massive iceberg and taking the station with it. The decision was made to relocate the entire station. The operation took three Antarctic summers to complete. First, a new site was selected 23 kilometers upstream on thicker, more stable ice. The route was surveyed using ground-penetrating radar to detect crevasses and weak spots. Then, the modules were prepared for transport. All loose equipment was secured and external connections were detached. The corridors were collapsed and the hydraulic legs were retracted so the modules rested on their skis. A convoy of bulldozers, each one equipped with GPS and communication systems, began towing the modules one at a time. The journey took several days. The modules were moved slowly, at speeds rarely exceeding three kilometers per hour, with constant monitoring for ice conditions. Once at the new site, the modules were repositioned, the legs were extended, and the corridors were reattached. The station was operational again within weeks. The relocation proved the concept. Halley 6 had done what no other Antarctic station could do. It had moved. Halley 6 exists for one reason, science. The data collected here can't be replicated anywhere else. The station's location directly under the ozone hole makes it one of the most important sites for atmospheric research. Scientists at Halley measure ozone levels daily, tracking the seasonal thinning and recovery of the ozone layer. The data collected here contributed to the discovery of the ozone hole in 1985, one of the most significant environmental findings of the 20th century. The station also conducts space weather research. Halley sits in a region where solar wind interacts with Earth's magnetic field, creating conditions that can disrupt satellites, communication systems, and power grids. 
Instruments at Halley monitor these interactions in real time, providing early warnings for space weather events. Climate research is another focus. Ice cores drilled near the station contain records of atmospheric composition going back thousands of years. These cores are used to study past climate conditions and predict future changes. Meteorological data from Halley contributes to global weather models. Temperature, wind speed, atmospheric pressure, and snowfall are recorded continuously, feeding into systems used for everything from aviation to climate forecasting. Even after relocation, Halley 6 remains under threat. In 2019, a second chasm began forming on the Brunt ice shelf, this time downstream of the new station site. The chasm, known as Chasm 2, raised concerns that another relocation might be necessary. At the same time, a second fracture, called the Halloween Crack, appeared closer to the coast. The combination of these two features suggested the ice shelf could calve a massive iceberg at any time. In 2017, the British Antarctic Survey made the precautionary decision to withdraw all staff from Halley 6 during the winter months. The station now operates only during the Antarctic summer, when evacuation is possible if the ice shelf collapses. The station remains fully functional, and scientific instruments continue collecting data year-round. Automated systems keep the equipment running even when no one is present. Remote monitoring allows scientists to access data in real time from the UK. The decision to withdraw winter staff wasn't easy. Halley 6 was designed to operate year-round, and the loss of continuous human presence reduces the types of research that can be conducted. But the risks were too high. The ice shelf remains unpredictable, and the safety of personnel comes first. Halley 6 represents a shift in how humans approach extreme environments. Traditional Antarctic stations were built to last, anchored into the ice with the assumption that the ice itself was stable. Halley 6 was built with the assumption that nothing is stable. It's a structure designed for impermanence, for adaptation, for survival in a landscape that constantly changes. The engineering principles behind Halley 6 have implications beyond Antarctica. Modular relocatable structures could be used in other extreme environments, from Arctic research stations to disaster relief shelters. The hydraulic leg system could be adapted for flood-prone areas or regions affected by subsidence. The station also demonstrates the importance of long-term thinking. Halley's ascent reportedly cost around 26 million pounds to build, a significant investment for a structure that might need to be moved or even abandoned. But the scientific data it produces and the engineering knowledge it generates justify the cost. The station remains operational today, continuing to collect data that shapes our understanding of the planet. It's been moved once, and it may need to be moved again. But that was always the plan. What do you think the future holds for Antarctic research stations as the ice continues to shift? Let us know in the comments, and subscribe for more stories from Worldwide Arch.